So reactive program is uh, probably many have heard of it. It has gained quite a popularity uh, the last years. Uh, actually started, uh, I think, with, with Microsoft in mid-2000, uh, 2005, 2006. They started with something called reactive streams. Uh, and then one of these people working with that went to Netflix uh, and uh, transformed it this reactive streams into Java, which became Eric's Java. Uh, and then it picked up quite a lot. They were quite good uh, advocates for the, the reactive. And then in uh, 2013, Jonas Bernier uh, uh, created this reactive manifesto. That is like a, a document uh, web page uh, describing what a reactive system or reactive architecture should be. Uh, it's very high level, uh, just a few few bullet points. Uh, and what they're saying there is like a uh, reactive system should be a responsive, resilient, elastic, and message-driven system. Uh, and what I just mean is that we, some sort, the system should be asynchronous and sending uh, events or messages uh, through the system. Uh, it's just so it can be more responsive for the user, so you don't uh, look up the, the UI or the user interface uh, by uh, having synchronous data f fetching from, from services. Uh, and resilient, it should be like, it should act uh, gracefully on, on exceptions and errors. Uh, so it doesn't crash because you have a, a error, you should try to continue to, to run as, as normal. Uh, and at least elastic is about how the system should scale. It should scale uh, good. Uh, so that's a little bit about background about the reactive programming and, uh, and all about the reactive manifesto. Uh, it's a very short introduction. Uh, hopefully give you something. So Eric's Java then, as I said before, uh, it is a um, port from reactive extensions, what's, which was founded by Microsoft uh, on the .NET platform uh, to the JVM by Netflix. Uh, uh, and uh, Basically, it's, it's based on a concept called observable observer. And uh, for some of you that might be familiar, because I think it's been in the, in, in the Java uh, since 1.0, uh, as I have uh, classes and, and a um, uh, pattern there. Uh, and it's basically what it's uh, based on is that you have a class or an object that can be observable. And you have observers which can uh, 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 they can uh, say that they want to subscribe on this observable. Uh, and when uh, the register their their interest in in fetching uh, or be notified when something is happening, it's quite often or was quite often used in in uh, uh, UI programming. Uh, Uh, so a little bit more about the observable. So this is like the the big two, the observable and the and observer is the big big two, two uh, things in it. So uh, observable is a source for push-based event data, uh, which means it's uh, um, has only one, uh, or actually has one method which called is. Uh, uh, subscribe, where a class is uh, re registered that wants to subscribe, and then it's calling uh, three different, can call three different methods on this, this subscriber. Uh, in uh, Rx Java, there's uh, two types of observables. Uh, the observable, obvious, and then we have a flowable. Uh, and this is new from the 2.0. In 1.0, we only had the observable. Uh, and the flowable is a new class that handles the the back pressure. Uh, and with back pressure is if a, uh, a observer uh, observable is uh, producing a lot of data that the clients or the, the observers can't uh, process. Uh, there will be, of course, be be a uh, loss of data because it can't consume it. But then there's ways to uh, handle this with, for example, cache and other stuff. Uh, so Flowable has a solution for that. Uh, and also we have a concept called 
hot versus cold observables. I will show a little bit more about that later. Uh, but it means that a cold observable is not producing any data until someone has subscribed on that one. Uh, while hot uh, observable is producing data all the time in the background. Uh, and maybe a, a good example of that could be, for example, if you have an observable that is listening on keystrokes, then of course every time a user is typing the keystrokes, that would observable will be notified, but there might be might not be any other, anyone subscribing on that one. Uh, this means that uh, there still will be the data, the events will be there, but it won't be uh, processed by anyone. Um. So the scribe then, uh, it basically has four methods. Uh, uh, unsubscribe uh, is called when the Observable is uh, is getting it at uh, when it's registered that this subscriber uh, is going to subscribe on the observable that one is called. So you can do some initial stuff there. Uh, but the most important uh, three methods are the on next, uh, which is the method that is called when uh, uh, there's new data, a new event in the observable. Uh, and uh, on error, as the name says, uh, is thrown uh, or called when there is an error uh, in the events processing. Uh, and on, on complete is called when the, the observable has no, uh, won't produce any more data. Um, and both on error on on complete is uh, what you call terminal states. Uh, so after those are called, and uh, any one of those is called the the observable is dead, so to say. Yeah. Uh, okay, so now to the fun part. Uh, some code to show you more about how it could look like. That should be a presentation, but yes. Okay, so hopefully <laughs> that was not as good. Can I? Can you see it like that, or it's good? Yeah, good. Then we skip the presentation mode. Um, so here um, I have some code that is. Uh, First here, we're creating an observable. Uh, and in this case, we the, the observable and flowable has a lot of methods for uh, creating uh, uh, observables, the initial values, or producing this. So in this case, we are creating an interval that is every, every 200 milliseconds, uh, it uh, increases value. That's all it does. Uh, uh, then we have uh, the metaphor uh, uh, register subscriber, uh, and in this case, it, this is like the uh, on next, uh, on error, or on completed methods. Uh, so I use lambda expressions here for sending min. Uh, there, are, there are methods for just uh, doing the on next and, and uh, or on next and complete and stuff like that. So. Uh, So we can start by just running this. Uh, so this is just a simple case, and I have put a uh, sleep here, or it would turn the program would terminate directly if I run this. So here we can see it start producing some numbers until five seconds has gone. Um, 
And here is the, if we want to uh, create a uh, subscriber in a more traditional way, uh, we could do it like this. Uh, it's, I mean, it's the same, same principle. Uh, and I will delete this one. So next step, I will uh, show you what will happen if two subscribers are subscribing on the same observable. Uh, so I'm here. I am adding a uh, another one. Uh, First, I sleep for 500 milliseconds, uh, just to show you uh, what will happen with the, with the values that are produced. Uh, and then I create an, uh, another one, and I have to do this as well. So we can see which, which one is uh, getting which data. So if we run this again, so you see the here's the first one, and then there comes the second one. So the second one gets the same values as the first one. Uh, so it starts from the, the beginning, uh, which is quite interesting. Uh, But uh, if we don't want that, how can we call it? So that, this is, will be like a, a, a co cold uh, observable. It's uh, producing data from the beginning, and it will produce anything until someone has, uh, has started subscribing on it. But then we can change the, the observable to something called uh, a connectable observable. Uh, and then it, we will turn this into a... a uh, Hot observable. Oh, yes, so then we will have a different output down here. Now you will see that uh, the second one will get the same values as the first one. So we have tr three, three, and before we had zero there, the first, second. Um. So, yeah, so that was a little bit I had about the first, the how to create observable. Um, but there's a lot of other nice stuff you could do with uh, with uh, with uh, Arc Java, and it uh, it has a huge amount of operators. Uh, and if you're familiar familiar with streams, uh, Lambda uh, in Java eight. Uh, you will see, okay, this looks almost the same. Uh, I will come to a, a little bit more uh, comparison between Java 8 streams and, and Rx Java, but there ha it has a lot of these operators like map and uh, for each and, and, to, and filter for, uh, for working with the data that's coming from the observable. Uh, so I will just show some of the basic ones here. Uh, uh, because uh, it's it's hard to choose, but uh, it, as I said, it has a huge uh, amount of uh, operators, and it has a huge amount of operators that could work with different uh, observables or different streams of, of data that you could choose if you 
Uh, you first only get uh, data from the, the first uh, stream of data, uh, but if that one is failing, you take the second one uh, and uh, stuff like that. Uh, um, very interesting stuff. So, uh, yeah, an ordinary map, uh, what it does is uh, here I'm just creating a observable with the, the string hello, uh, and with the map I'm uh, transforming the this string to hello plus java form memo as you describe and then just print it. <laughs> Yay. Uh, yeah, and if you have questions, please interrupt me or if I'm going too fast or too slow. Uh, yeah, so that's a lambda expression in Java 8. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, so it's the same as uh, So it's a meta reference, uh, so I can change like that. Uh, and then we have uh, uh, more, not the, not the meta reference anymore, uh, more ordinary lambda expression. And of course, I can even. Uh, I was thinking if I could just uh, do a pre Java 8 version, but yeah, uh, that's, I think it's. Uh, too much challenge for me. Um, the other one is uh, this communist uh, flat map. Uh, so what it just what it does is uh, it takes a. Oh, thank you. Um, it takes a an observable uh, or an. Uh, Stream of servals, uh, and then it uh, converts it uh, to a new uh, stream of servals. So, for example, you can, uh, so like in this case, uh, I have a string, I split the string into characters instead. So, I return a observable with characters. Uh, so, I return observable uh, creating from array where I split on the hard C, but it's on the space, uh, and then I uh, yeah, sorry, it was not characters. I split it in space and then we just write the words. Yeah, so it's so it's a handy method for creating a, an observable from from data. Uh, I mean, <coughs> uh, maybe this is not the normal way to do it. Uh, I mean this. You can do it, <coughs> for example, if you want to to iterate over stuff, but maybe it's more for testing uh, or where you create. Uh, it's and it's this just method. It comes in nine different shapes with uh, nine different parameters. So it's uh, and it's, so it's it's you can uh, give it like nine uh, objects as most. Uh, yeah. So if we run this again, we see that we have each word on a new line. <coughs> uh, then come to something that does not exist with Java streams. Uh, and that is how we can combine two observables of data. Uh, and they can be different kind of data. So in this case, I have one observable uh, consisting of strings, uh, another observable consisting of uh, numbers, integers, uh, and then I do a zip, uh, which means that I'm taking the first element from the first observable and combine it with the element from the second uh, second uh, observable, uh, which is these two, and then I am uh, yeah, converting them to string and return them and then printing them. Uh, and there's a lot of ways of how you can uh, if, if this were observables that were producing data, for example, like a timer, uh, you have ways to uh, specify that you want to, if one observable sends uh, a data, so it's called on in the on next method, uh, you can say, okay, but I have, don't have a new value from the other one. 
then I can take the previous one uh, uh, and do stuff like that uh, or wait for it. Uh, so in that way, it looks like I can have like, if for example, if you have a, a API, you you pull data from one of the APIs, but the other one has the don't you don't get any new data, so you can then combine them. Uh, uh, so it produces the, from the same data from the other API, API all the time. <laughs> yeah, so there we have the combined ones that's done. Uh, and uh, the last example I had is, yeah, it's a very basic one. Uh, what it does is just, uh, you see I have a lot of integers here, but that duplicates. Uh, so what it does is just take, uh, removes the duplicates and, and then I'm printing it. Yes. I mean, um, uh, so in in uh, that's that's yeah. So you don't know, and that's for example in, in the uh, in the other example. That's why I had to have this. Uh, 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 oh, sorry. Yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. So, of course, when I run this, I won't have only have the unique values. <coughs> nice. Okay. So. That's a little bit short about what you can do, and uh, as I said, there's a lot of more stuff you can do. It's uh, really nice and cool stuff. Uh, but I will show something even cooler. My fancy app. Right, sorry. Uh, so I created a app called Eric's Airline, uh, and uh, they're checked for this this legacy app. Right now, it's like I have a web client that's based on Angular 2. Uh, it's calling a, a backend, which is a Spring Boot application uh, with a REST API, uh, and uh, then I have. Uh, uh, free faked uh, APIs in the background, which is, is supposed to be out of my control. Uh, and this is like all our favorite uh, air companies, EasyJet and Ryanair and Norwegian. I took that for Ever mostly. So, uh, uh, so it, it actually the, the app is not doing much. Uh, the web client is, is doing a search. Uh, so I can just show you the app instead. Um, so, uh, what you're supposed to do is, uh, you go here, you enter an airport, uh, or a place you want to travel from, and then it looks up, uh, all possible, uh, airports you can travel to, uh, with these camp companies. And right now it's very slow. Uh, I have uh, put some timers or uh, sleeps in this in the APIs to simulate that they're taking some time. Uh, but it takes around 10 seconds to load load this list. Uh, uh, this is like what do we get uh, a list of f airports. Uh, and I was thinking about having competition. Anyone can say where these airports are. Locator, because I have no idea. Hamburg, I know. 
and there are some NE encoding problems. Yeah, uh, so I found a list on, on on the web with all the airports in the world and picked them randomly. Uh, yes, so that's how the app looks. Uh, and my goal is to try to convert this to uh, a more reactive app. Uh, Uh, and I will mainly just work in the, this this backend because uh, that's mostly what we have control over. Uh, as I said, it's very basic. It's a Spring Boot, uh, so I'm just starting up the config for Spring Boot. Uh, I have one controller uh, that takes the the REST API here uh, and creates the gets fetches the data. So in my service, I am. Created this free uh, service for each airport, uh, and then I'm uh, when I'm getting this call, I I look up to each uh, each airline, uh, and I actually do two API calls. First, I take all the possible destinations. Uh, I'm getting a list from for that airline for a, from that airport, uh, and then I'm go fetching uh, each uh, air, each uh, tr flight uh, uh, one by one. Uh, so that's also why it takes some some time, uh, and of course, uh, this is not a very good uh, architecture of the of the app. But I think that's quite often what you see, uh, because usually, at least the applications I've seen, you you start uh, uh, with one one flight, and then the product owner comes say, "Oh, we need this one as well," and then you just throw it in and. Without, because the deadline was yesterday, you don't uh, realize that okay, this was bad for performers. So uh, the first thing I will do is I will start from the bottom and go up. Uh, so I will take, uh, for example, the EasyJet service, uh, which is just. Uh, uses REST template for Spring, uh, calls the, the API, uh, gets a result or an array, uh, returns the list, uh, and then it, this is for the flights, uh, same same pattern. So the, the first uh, goal is to convert this method so it, instead of uh, returning a list here, it returns an observable. Uh, Sorry, there's a missing some library. Okay, I do like this. Is So I took the fast way. Um, so as I said, uh, we're what we're doing instead is this REST tape that ret was returning an array. So we're creating an observable from that array. Uh, 
and then we're just returning that uh, observable instead. And uh, and I've done this all this uh, the other service as well. Uh, and if we look at uh, the airline service, which is calling this, I have then uh, uh, instead of having to call each uh, service by uh, procedure, I creating an observable and I'm merging these uh, observables I'm getting from from here. Uh, and here I'm in, uh, what I'm doing here is I, I getting the destination which we're as was called I showed before with which returns the possible destinations. Uh, I'm creating subscribe on which which says that I want to create this in a in another thread. Uh, uh, and then I am uh, converting this because it, this one is returning a, a uh, list of strings or uh, strings. Uh, so I'm taking the strings, cr uh, creating a flat map, converting it into uh, a, a observable of uh, possible flights instead, uh, which it, that one is calling uh, the other API. Uh, and then I'm going to do some stupid mapping here uh, to get in the, the name. Um, so then I am merging these, uh, and because uh, uh, Eric Zerv is multi-threaded, uh, this will be we running in different threads. Uh, and then I am uh, doing some sorting based on the on the price here as well. Uh, Uh, actually, uh, you have to in in pre Rx Java two you had to do this by yourself, uh, but in Rx uh, two it comes out of the box. Uh, it creates uh, each uh, of the each server will become in a different on a different thread. Uh, so you actually you don't uh, really have to do the subscribe on anymore. But b before uh, Java uh, Rx Java two. Uh, you had to do it, or it will all be run on the same thread, which uh, would be good for performance. Uh. So, how many threads will be created here in practice? Is it limited somehow by subscribe on saying this will not be applied to each uh, destination? Uh, it should uh, be a. Uh, uh, for each uh, destination. Yeah. 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 Uh, true. Um, so yeah. So it will spawn a lot of threads. Uh, so if you have a like uh, have a heavy used web server, it would be that nice. Luckily, I'm the only one using this one. So yeah, it's. it's uh, I mean, there's a lot of caveats with this application, and uh, it's not the best one, but. It's it's true that that would be not very good, uh, and also I uh, I think there's a thread pool in the background, so I don't know what uh, limit is on that one, uh, uh, but that should kick in, shouldn't be unlimited. Uh, uh, no, I mean the the callback. Uh, so well, there is no callbacks for for X Java. Uh, what will happen is that uh, uh, the uh, let's say what's good to one to so uh, I mean the flat map or uh, the callbacks are so yeah it will come in the next uh, sorry in the next uh, part uh, in the web part. So here is the what, what you say callback, uh, and in this case, uh, I'm just uh, uh, returning a list, uh, which is uh, a little bit uh, uh, creating my app uh, non-reactive uh, anymore, uh, because the, the point of, of reactive should be that we don't have an asynchronous call, which this one would be.
but I have a, a fix for that later on, uh, where I am actually uh, use the service and event service and events to send out uh, portions of the, of the data instead, uh, which then will be more reactive uh, than just returning a list. So if we, I mean, so so uh, so it, it actually delivers here. So what I mean, this is better that uh, that's internal that will. Uh, so I don't haven't uh, created any subscriber in this case because the the two list. Yeah. Uh, it would be in the same thread. It would be this would be the main thread for the for the for the web, the app, the the whole the server. No, no, not not in this case. Uh, I mean, so, uh, um, uh, so I mean, the only advantage I take here from from Eric's job and, and the multi-trading part is, I mean, it's actually in here where I uh, I'm splitting these uh, on on different threads. Uh, so instead of before, I had uh, synchronous call for each each, uh, and here I'm actually splitting them up to. To uh, to different threads. Uh, okay, but what, what if, if you register? I'm an uh, observer. Of you register for some event. Yeah. And I uh, when they, this uh, I found the thread has gone wrong. It has to happen. It has to happen. Yeah. And then something suddenly happens, and I deliver it to you. Yeah. Do, you do I deliver it on on my thread or? No, a separate thread. A separate. Thread. Yeah. And that is your thread. Yeah. Okay, so that is some kind of invoke later. Yeah. Yeah. Passing it to you, and, and your thread uh, executes uh, when it's uh, in some given moment. Yeah. So there will be no synchronization problem. Uh, hopefully not. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, yeah. So th there are ways, of course. I'm pretty sure it can be a synchronization problem. But but one one thing is. Uh, it would be, of course, a synchronization problem if I deliver it uh, for your code. Yeah. On my thread. Yeah. Yeah. So what this one is, the, the two list blocking get will uh, will let's say uh, will make sure that uh, all the data is collected before before uh, uh, blocking that that thread. Uh, yes. So if I restart the application. At least you will see some performance improvement, uh, and uh, of course that may, it's not entirely to Eric's Java. It's more that we are splitting the, the data collection uh, and fetching. Okay, so I think I actually broke my client, so. Uh, Yeah, uh, that's too bad. Uh, I think I won't be able to uh, fix that now. Uh, 
but uh, uh, by doing this, at least I'm, 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 there won't be much change in, but in the client, except that this goes, uh, of course, three times faster. Uh, so we'll be down to three seconds, uh, approximately. <laughs> uh, and the, the other thing I, I did, which I did yesterday, this, so it's not uh, uh, perfect and, and it's uh, not working 100%, but as I said before, I, I um, used the uh, server-side event, which is built in in Spring Boot and Spring. Uh, so I could at least show you the, the, the code. Uh, so it's quite simple uh, to do. You just uh, return, a, return an SSE emitter instead. Uh, and here you see more like, okay, here's the actual subscribe code. So what I'm doing here for uh, instead of just returning a list uh, of all the all the objects, all the flights, I'm uh, actually taking each uh, data that we we are receiving, and then use the SSS, SSE emitter to send them to the client. Uh, and then on the the client side, I've, I've used the the same uh, the. Have, uh, it's called. Uh, there's some event uh, composer where this for in Java or in, in that you could use to uh, easily uh, uh, subscribe on this one and uh, get the events. Okay, so that's why it's not working. So the code is not there. Uh, like that. Okay. Well, uh, it's some uh, quite simple code uh, that you can use. Uh, we have the code there. Uh, so this is uh, how it looks now with Angular uh, 2. Uh, I do a subscription of flights, uh, but I'm getting all the data as, as a big string uh, or big array. Uh, and in the with the server side events, I'm uh, I've used this event source. So there is a observable library built in with RxJS in uh, Angular two. So I'm using that one, uh, creating event source, and it basically. Similar to on the Java side uh, of the message, I'm, I'm processing the data and updating my my model in the uh, in this component uh, and shows. Uh, so, but unfortunately, I can't show you that it's working. So you have to trust me. Uh, okay, so that was actually all I um, had about the. Coding stuff. Uh, so a little bit short summary. Uh, so I tried to show you how you can use Arc Java to convert a, uh, a legacy application uh, to be a little, at least a little bit more reactive. Uh, 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 what I haven't shown you is a little more, but. The other stuff you can do with with error handling and stuff like that, uh, how you could like return uh, default objects if, if it fails and, and stuff like that. Um, also, I take think about talk a little bit about what what's the difference between as these Java eight streams and uh, Rx Java, uh, and also a little bit about uh, what's coming in Java nine. So I mean the the big difference between uh, uh, Java 8 streams and, and Rx Java is that the Java 8 streams are, are pull based, uh, while Rx Java is uh, push based, which means that you're in, in streams you're actually pulling the data from from uh, from the stream, uh, while in in Rx Java you are pushing it. Uh, a method or callback is called every time. Uh, so I mean that's one of the big issues, uh, big difference. Uh, 
I think that in, in uh, Eric's Java, you can have better control over the, the threading and how you, how you can handle it. It has uh, a lot of helper methods for different types of, of pooling, if you're not pooling and stuff like that, uh, which Java 8 streams doesn't. Uh, and uh, the Java 8 streams are lacking time-based uh, uh, operators, which Eric Java has a lot of and great support for. It. Uh, and on the good news, good side is that in Java 9, they're coming with reactive streams in the API that would look uh, quite similar to Eric's Java and how it looks there. So it can be quite interest interesting to see how, it, how that takes on. Uh, so that was actually all for me.